So there's a couple of different ways in which you can install Node-RED. So to get started, one of the ways is via Signal K. So if you go to the Signal K App Store and search in here for Node-RED, you'll see that there's an application um, that you can just download and install straight into Signal K. I don't know whether that gives you the full features of Node-RED, but what it does do is it gives you the Signal K nodes already in Node-RED, which I'll show you later. That's just a way of getting your data into Node-RED really quickly. So you can install that from there. The other option, if you're an open plotter user, is that you can go through the application to install that. So if you just flick over to Open Plotter, here you can see the Open Plotter screen, and if you go onto the menu at the top here and you go to Open Plotter and you go to Dashboards, in the Dashboards app you can install, I believe this is the full version of Node-RED from this screen. Select it, make sure you click the Install button, and that will install it on your Open Plotter system. Once Node-RED has been installed, you access it by going to the web apps and clicking on Node-RED, or in Open Plotter by going through the apps and clicking the button there. One thing you do need to make sure of is that you're logged in. So make sure that you're logged in in Signal K before you go to Node-RED, or you'll get things like you're not authorized, you can't open this page, you just can't do things. So I found that if you log in first, and then you go to your web apps and you click Node-RED and you go straight in from there, it makes it much easier and you don't see any of those problems. Now, once you're in Node-RED, you'll probably be presented with this screen here. And it's a little bit overwhelming when you first come to this screen because you don't really know where to go. There are a couple of really useful things. So the menu up on the right hand side here, if you click on that um, and you go to uh, import, you can import Node-RED examples that you see on the internet. So if you see something and someone's already configured it for you, you can paste that into this screen here and import it straight into Node-RED. That's a very quick way of getting up and running. If someone's already created something, just copy it and start looking at it and try and understand what, what that um, setup is trying to do or what data it's going to give you. The other thing to get all of these different nodes down the left hand side here, if they're not currently installed on your installation, for example, this one here, again, go to this menu and go to manage palette. And here you can have a look through what nodes are installed and what you can search the directory for. So if something's missing that you particularly want and you found it online and someone said this is what it's part of, for example, this one here or this one, you can just search for them and you can install them. Also, if you're not using them, you can also disable them from this menu as well. Every time you create something or you change something in the window, you have to make sure that you deploy it before it actually works. So make sure that this button is not red like it is now, otherwise the flow that you've just been working on will not be deployed correctly. To get started, I'd take a look at the Signal K nodes at the bottom here. The subscribe node is probably one of the easiest to use. If you drag that in and open it up and put a path in here, it'll start to receive some of the data that you can see in the Signal K browser. Okay, so what we need to do now is we need to pick some data from the data screen. We're gonna pick this one here because that one's actually coming through and we can see some live data, those figures are changing. So let's pick that one, so depth below transducer. Let's just make sure we copy that. Let's go over to here. Let's pick a subscribe node. So this is the way that we get our data in. So we pick a Signal K subscribe node. We drop that in. We go into the Signal K subscribe node. We need to put the path in. So let's put the path in there. Let's click that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a debug node on the end of that because we want to see what's coming out of that. So let's just stick that in there, connect the two up, and let's press deploy. Okay, so now we can see that we've got some data coming through and it's just sending that depth information. You can actually see the data underneath the node, but you can also see in the debug window here. Now, if we don't wanna see it in the debug window, we can simply just turn the debug off. We'll still see the incoming data shown under, underneath the subscribe node, but we won't see it in the window on the right-hand side, which is debug. If that window is not showing, if you're stuck on this screen, click across to the little debug messages here and you'll be able to see that information. Now we can do something to this. We can take a very simple example, as I showed before, and just add one to it and send it back out. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna bring that across to our flow. I'm gonna paste it in. Now I don't need that one. I'm gonna connect add one up to that. 
So all we're doing is we're taking the payload and we're putting one onto the end of it and we're going to just send that out. There we go. So we sent 21, 23, and it's, as you notice, it's 23 this side, it's 24 that side, 22, 23, 20, 21. So it's simply just adding one to the value. Now if we head back over to here, you'll see that we've now got a signal K node red output, exactly the same path, but one digit out. So we've added one to this and we've got one digit higher than the incoming data. So that's really quite useful if you need to do some sort of offset or just a simple addition or subtraction, whatever it might be, you can do that really quite quickly. If you're gonna graph this or you're gonna use it in something else, you just need to make sure that you select the appropriate source because you will see two paths with the same name. So just make sure you select the Signal K node red source unless you've changed it in here. So you can change the source there to be something else. You can call it Matt's data, voting with the Bailey's data, whatever you wanted, it, it, it makes no difference. I just leave them on the default to be perfectly honest. So that's a very quick overview of where that is. As I say, the debug nodes are really quite helpful because you can put several debug nodes in. Um, if you're struggling to work out what is going on, you can, you can deploy those and then you can switch them on and off here. So we can see the incoming data and the add one data. Uh, let's just delete all of that. There you go. Exactly one apart, which is to be expected. And if we didn't want to see the incoming one, we can just turn that one off and we can just see the output. So in this example, what I'm doing is I'm flashing an LED light based on what the charger is doing. So if the charger is in float mode or storage mode, the light is set to just be on. If the charge is in bulk or absorption mode, it's set to flash at different intervals. So to trigger that or to, to test that, I'm using the SK SIM app. So as you can see, I've got float here. I'm going to change that to, to bulk. So it's gone into the bulk charge. So there's a couple of problems with how this actually works. So the first problem that I've got is when my charger turns off, it just stops sending data. So I don't actually send a a stop or I've, I've turned off or anything like that, it just stops sending data. So what I need to do is I actually need to trigger a response to actually turn the light off or the program just carries on running um, and continues to send whatever the last message was. So I've tried a couple of different ways to, to stop doing that and, and to, to trigger it in different ways, but I can't really work it out. So I'm really looking for a bit of advice as well on this because I don't think I've got this set up perfectly yet, but I'll, I'll show you what I've done. Um, and hopefully you can you can throw a few suggestions out on ways that I can improve it. So if we run through the, the options from left to right, um, I'll go into a little bit more detail on how you get some of these different um, sort of nodes on the left, because you can actually install nodes. So if you've installed node red from Signal K um, or from Open Plotter, you get these Signal K nodes here. So these are the ones, these are the, the inputs or the, the subscribe nodes so that you can start getting your information into Node Red. So the first one that I've got is this Signal K subscribe node. And as you can see in there, I'm looking for battery charger type. Nip over to here. This is my attribute, battery charger type. So that basically gets the message in and it looks at a period of, of every five seconds. I've, I've done that so that the LED is a bit more consistent in the way it flashes um, and it just allows me to get a, a nice input flow of messages rather than it just chucking bits in or it coming in slightly out of order. I've tried the delay uh, node but it, it didn't really seem to help so it, it just smooths th things out a little bit so that's why I've done that. So that's the data that's coming in and you can see what it's sending. So at the moment it's sending bulk. So that message then travels to this switch. In the switch we've got, we're looking for the message payload and we've got contain. So it contains bulk, absorption, float, storage or otherwise. And it'll check those rules each time. So at the moment it's going bulk charge, going to the switch and then it's traveling up here to this. And what this is doing is it is sending a one every 500 milliseconds. So every half a second it sends out a one. Now you can get these nodes, which are the trigger nodes, to send one, zero, one, zero, and do it like that. But I've found that I'm not able to quite reset them in the same way. So instead I'm using a toggle. So this is sending one, one, one every half second. And this is going on, off, on, off. And you can see what the LED is doing now. It's going true, false, true, false, true, false. 
And if I just show you the LED on the Raspberry Pi, you'll see at the moment that that is flashing pretty much every half a second. So that works great. I'm just gonna take absorption out of there, copy that, and I'm gonna paste that into here. So what's gonna happen next is in about five seconds, it's gonna click over to absorption mode because it's checking every five seconds. You can already see it in here. Um, so it's now gone to absorption and there we go. So absorption's just come through. It's now triggered this middle node here, which goes on and off every one second. So you can see now that the LED has slowed down and it's now flashing at a slower rate, which is which is what I wanted. I've, I've set that in here. It's exactly the same um, setup as this one. It's just to be repeated every one second. So you could, you could up that if you wanted to. Um, and make the interval longer between the LED flashes. Now you'll also see we've got some reset messages underneath this. So in order to stop these from flashing, because they'll just continue forever, you need to send a reset message to them. So if you follow this line here, that goes up to there, but this one also picks that up as well from everything else. So it shouldn't have one. Yeah, that's right. It hasn't got one on this top one, but it's got this one, this one, this one, and then through here to get to, to here. So any other message that comes out of the switch, other than bulk for the top one or absorption for the second one, will send the reset message to the appropriate one here and stop them from flashing. It turns that feature off. Otherwise, they both try and toggle the thing on and off at the same time. So that's how that's working. It's a little bit easier when we get down here because we're just turning the LED on. So when we get to the float stage, so if I go back to here and I put float in here, start sending that message across, you'll see it's changed to float here and in a couple of seconds my LED will change and it'll just go on. There we go, it's just gone on now. So that's now gone down this path you can see it's hit this one here and it's gone down here and it's clicked this on true. And what it's done is it sent a message reset to this and a message reset to this. So these have all turned off now. They're no longer sending anything. You can actually see that that's also saying true because um, that's the state that it last was in. So if we want to actually turn this LED off now, we have to come down this way, wait for this trigger to, to happen, which is listening for incoming messages. So if those incoming messages stop, it triggers a false, resets both of these, and also sends a false to the LED. So to trigger that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here. I'm going to stop the simulation. We have to wait 10 seconds, and the LED should turn off. There we go. So the LED is now turned off, and you can see there it's just sent the false message through. So that's basically how it works. So so in order to turn the LED to different stages, I have to send different messages to the different trigger nodes, these, these here. Um, and I also have to set, when it's not, when I don't want to trigger that, I also have to set a reset to that opposite trigger node to actually turn it off. Um, and basically that's, that's how it's working. So when there's no messages coming in, this one is now activated and it's constantly sending false. It's turning the LED off and it's making sure everything that's, is reset so it won't send any more messages out. But uh, obviously if the charger then comes back on and it goes back into bulk charge mode. Uh, sorry, I need to press play again. There we go. Turn that back on. We start sending bulk and in a second, It'll trigger that, we'll start triggering this. There we go, we've triggered it now. And now it's starting to send true, false, true, false, and the LED is flashing a little bit faster. So Node Red is a really powerful tool. It takes a little bit of getting used to it. One of the best things that you can use is the, de is the debug node here. You can drop the debug node in and you can connect it to any point and deploy it. And you can see what is coming out. I mean, that should just say bulk. Um, but we'll see that hopefully in a second. It should subscribe to that and we should start seeing the message pop up. There we go. So that should pop up every five seconds because that's what I've set the subscribe to. And you can see there, there 2805, 28, uh, 2800, 2805, 2810. It's just going to be every five seconds. Um, you can have multiple of these and you can turn them on and off with this little button here. So if I don't want to see that one, I can just turn it off. 
So if you're having a problem with something, maybe you want to see what's going on up here, you can have a couple of them in. I just deploy that, just delete all those. Um, and you should see debug node six now, and it should start toggling once that, that timer kicks in again. Here it goes, it's just about to start. There we go, so you should see true, false, true, false, true, false. There we go. And if I don't want to see that one, I can turn that off. I can turn this one back on. And in a second, we should start to see that. And that's just because of the delay. I've got a little bit of a delay going on, as I say. Otherwise, if I keep sending the uh, subscribe to the incoming stream faster, occasionally it gets a little bit out of sync. It's sometimes coming in slightly faster than a second for some reason. Um, I think that's something in Signal K, actually. But I found if I subscribe on the five second um, sort of time period, the flashing of the LED is much more consistent. And to be honest, I've done a lot of work to try and get it like that. But actually, just, just changing the subscribe timer has made a massive difference. So that, that's basically what I've done.